We just hit a huge milestone for Panda Boat. We hit 5,000 nautical miles from when we left in Florida originally. All so, the way up here to Greenland. All the way to Greenland. 5,000 miles even. Look at that, 5,000 nautical miles. Now we have Greenland We're stamped. We're officially Greenland stamped. Yeah. We did it. We're on Greenland. <laughs> this kind of green too. So this is like ultimate discovery. We are up here in Greenland, totally remote place, remote island, way up in a fjord, and we're gonna go find a hot spring. Like, how cool is that? Welcome to Greenland. <laughs> arrived. We just sent our final position report to uh, Green Greenland Police or Green Poss. Green Poss <laughs> received our mail so it shows we are here. They don't have to send a search party. We've been trying to anchor in this little anchorage and we've never had so much problem anchoring. We had to retry three times and this third time it finally caught but I couldn't hold it like full RPM but I can give it pretty good RPM, so. Figure the weight of the chain and how much chain we let out and the anchor alone will keep us sitting for a good, yeah. a good wind, but maybe nothing over 20 knots. So especially after a long voyage, it's the last thing you wanna do is keep anchoring. But we know there's not supposed to be much weather for a while. So I think we'll be okay here for a few days. Anyway, this anchor is just pretty cool. It's right on the backside of the town. See, it's uh, very remote, very beautiful. It's a cool spot. All right, let's go make some breakfast and open up celebratory arrival beer. I'm starving. I never got breakfast. I was omelet, toast. We did it. Cheers. After being quarantined to our boat for three weeks, being on land again was stimulating and Greenland was a major sensory overload. We were keen to explore the town, walk as far as our sea legs could take us, soaking it all in one step at a time. And this is the, the little police station here. <laughs> well, we just checked in to Greenland officially. <laughs> I think that was probably the easiest check-in that we've ever experienced in our lives. <laughs> the police officer was super nice. He just super. asked where we were from and how long we'd like to stay. And the big thing now is quarantine. We said we've been quarantined for three weeks, so he said, okay, no problem. Yeah. And it was optional if he wanted to stamp our passports. He never even looked at the passport. He just was um, like, okay. Yeah, but and he got his stamp really out. Nice. And now we have Greenland We're stamped. officially Greenland stamped. Yeah. Which is awesome. And he's like, just enjoy your stay. Okay. Awesome. So nice. And, yeah. and he informed us where did we get our water. Yeah. He's just like, there's the blue houses. So on the street, there's these little blue huts. And this is where everyone fills up their water. So you come here and you, and you press this button. And press that button and water comes out here. Nanortalik. This town's name in Greenlandic translates to the place of the polar bears, where in centuries past, polar bears are have thought to roam this remote island. 
However, in present day, seeing a polar bear this far south is very much uncommon. Though we always kept a lookout, spotting every whitish dot amongst the mountain sides, which would always turn out to be a rock instead. This is beautiful here. Like, really cool little... Actually, the town's bigger than I thought it would be. Like, there's yeah. a lot to it. Nanortalik has a population of around 1,200 people and dates back to the late 1700s, when the Norse were thought to have established a small whaling and trading center here. Today, the town's economy is focused around fishing and a small base of tourism. There have been a few attempts of gold mining over the past century, however, none have remained profitable with the harsh winter climates. Being one of the few tourists from this season, we stuck out like a lot, and we didn't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, so we mainly kept to ourselves in search of pristine beauty and isolated anchorages of all of the fjords. Before setting out from Nanortalik, we needed to refill our diesel and water tanks. Solari. <laughs> that one says Benzin. And we are unsure which one is diesel. <laughs> well, maybe the price would tell us. What does the nozzle say? The top said gasoline. One letter is missing. Gasoline, gasoline. I failed. I didn't read all the things. The owner of the local fuel station slash restaurant kindly allowed us into their kitchen so we could fill our portable water jugs. All filled up and ready to explore, here's what's coming up on Sailing Panda from our adventures in Greenland.
navigate through these little bits of ice. I feel like this piece is coming at us. I never thought I'd be at the foot of a glacier in my life. <laughs> Our anchor. Look at the amount of seaweed. All right, well, we're picking up anchor today. We're gonna go a little bit northeast to like a hot spring, 20, 25 miles away. Five miles away. And we got that up. But look at the amount of seaweed kelp growth that's here. Oh, it's a ton. So, but we got our buoy up with our trip line. So now we can motor. I'm going to now motor us gently forward so we don't drift into the rocks. quite the work <laughs> but we finally got free uh, after some motoring skills and me pulling up the anchor a few times and yeah, now we're on our way I'm really excited to see more of these fjords and to visit the hot springs <laughs> yeah I, I'm looking forward to getting warm for a little bit yeah That'd be nice a little shallow spot here where it's seven meters of depth in between like two rocks Pretty much whenever the depth gets pretty shallow, we just pull it into like neutral and just creep forward so that if we do touch, it won't be a big deal. Sailing among icebergs is a new, exciting, and somewhat intimidating experience for us. But like most things, once you do it, you start to feel more comfortable as you gain the respect and appreciation of navigating around ice. Keeping a close watch is very important, as sailing into any bit decently sized could put an unwanted hole in your boat. Luckily though, they are fairly easy to spot and don't exactly move too fast. Most of the ones we saw around here had sadly come to the end of their journey by running aground. These icebergs come from glaciers farther inland. A staggering 90% of the whole iceberg is below the water, so what we see here is actually quite massive. It is absolutely spectacular to see the variety of shapes, colors, and patterns in the ice. The sounds of the icebergs are also quite incredible to experience, with a constant cadence of popping, crackling, and occasionally a roaring crack like lightning and thunder followed by a climactic crash and finale of splashes. That is if we are lucky enough to witness it breaking apart, calving, or rolling over. This creates many smaller pieces in the constant erosion process. Any iceberg between two to five meters in size is generally called a bergy bit, while pieces smaller than two meters are called growlers. I'm enjoying this day sail through the Greenland fjords, sailing around icebergs, bergy bits, and just, oh my god, like the scenery. Everywhere you look, it's incredible. We just anchored in this little 
little harbor over here. No problems anchoring this time. First try, luckily. Yeah, grabbed right away. <laughs> grabbed after a few skids and we are really excited to explore. <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce this place. Like, you didn't talk? You didn't talk. You didn't talk. You didn't talk? I have no idea. Okay, we're really bad at I don't remember how this. to spell it. Start with a U. Yeah. Anyway. But apparently there's hot springs just over this hill. And it's like pretty much the only hot springs in all of Greenland. And interestingly, they are not like, I guess the heat that's generated is from like the friction of two... Tectonic plates. Not tectonic plates though, it was like oh. the island or just, I don't know. It was different than normal, whatever that means. So yeah, I'm excited. And we have lots of daylight left today, so we can go walk around and explore. And it's cool too, there's like two anchorage possibilities. There's like this one on this side of the bay, then there's an, another side of the bay. But as we're approaching, we could see tons of giant icebergs on the other side, where this, there are bergs, but they're far away and we can track them. So I think this is a, a good spot. So this is like ultimate discovery. We are up here in Greenland, totally remote place, remote island, way up in a fjord, and we're gonna go find a hot spring. Like, how cool is that? We have panda boat out there on anchor, and here we are ready to explore with a bathing suit and towels. Let's go check it out. What do you got there? A piece of ice. Whoa, so look at that. Whoa. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, but wow. And it's really heavy. I didn't expect it to be that heavy. Wow. It's so smooth. Yep, that's ice. <laughs> It doesn't taste salty though. Wow, glacial ice. We put that in our cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> oh. After we were done playing with the ice and exploring the island, it was time to warm up. Hot springs in Greenland are apparently quite common, but the key distinction is this spring on the island of Unartok is the only one warm enough to bathe in. 
In Greenlandic, Unartak means something warm, and at a temperature of 95 Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius, these springs provide the perfect bathing temperature, a warm sanctuary to escape the cold days. Interestingly, the hot springs here are not due to volcanic activity, but rather friction between the Earth's crust well below. These springs have been said to be visited by the Norse some 1,000 years ago, constructing bathtubs with boulders around the springs. What do you think? It feels really good against the skin. There's this, um, all these little stones on the bottom and they're like really hot too in these spots where there's actually if you find the bubbles and you dig your feet in and it's like really nice and hot <laughs> you just sit here for a little while and it just feels like a hot stone bath but the view is spectacular like you have such a juxtaposition with the hot spring and these huge ice giants out there in the water and it's it's unworldly it's kind of shallow so you have to kneel in here but it's really nice to be able to have some hot water for a change we don't have any on the boat so this is our first warm water bath uh, in probably six months it's a really good change <laughs> especially since it's been so cold to us, uh, but a glorious day. Couldn't ask for better weather. It's been sunny, like since maybe a half an hour ago. So everything just opens up and it is gorgeous scenery, especially in a nice hot bath to be able to look around at the icebergs and these beautiful mountainsides. Oh, can't get any better than this, really can't. <laughs> The view is absolutely breathtaking, and you can hear the distant sounds of the icebergs calving and cracking. I would find myself looking out into that icy fjord, getting lost in time, wondering if I was experiencing the same views, emotions, and sensations that ancient humans had so long ago. Well, after a pretty awesome day of uh, hot spring and sunshine here in Greenland, to top it off, when we are on the beach, we caught a bunch of mussels. And we have never like cooked or prepared mussels before. The mussels have this like little, it's called a beard, I guess, that grows off of them. So I guess I pull it out and it just comes right off. Some of these have like some little barnacles and I just scrape them off. And this is with that guy. Ooh, that's a big one. Yeah. So we have some linguine pasta that's cooked in the pressure cooker. Now in our mussel saga, we have made the broth and brought it to a boil. Garlic, butter, all kinds of seasoning. Bring it to a boil. I am probably two notches higher. Wow, some of those are massive. Yeah, like this one. Look at the size of those muscles. Mm. And to top off this magical day, we were visited by a small pod of whales passing us by as they navigated down the fjord.
Mush. Mush. Land is weird. It's really solid and stable. That is a big crow, man. I'm pretty sure it is. Jesus, those crows are the size of dogs. That was indeed random. We're just kind of limping this thing along. It has a bunch of tape on it. <laughs> it appears that every country has a different dye color for their diesel. Uh, in the U.S., for non-highway use, it's red. Oh, we got, yeah, they got this yeah. in Canada. It looks like a bluish turquoise. So, you say we'll have purple fuel? Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll have purple fuel. That'll look cool. Oh, oh no. Oh no. It's so cold. Oh god. And Darren's in full selfie. <laughs> <laughs> in my bathing suit. All right, a little selfie time. Yeah, here we are, full valleys. I, uh, that was really difficult getting <laughs> from a nice hot spring to like 40 degree air and then change and dry off. Got that heater on full blast, yeah. Pressure cooking nudes is the way to go. Uh, they're perfect. Mm. Mm. It tastes like the sea. Holy cow. Dun da da da. Dun da da da. Dun da da da. Sunset. This Greenland place, absolutely stunning. <laughs>